So, so far we have uh, discussed about the transport of materials, either solids or gases or liquids in the bodies of living things in animals. So, we have seen the how the circulatory system or the transport system is evolved in animals and what are the active parts and uh, components of the system and how they are interacting or working. Now, let us look at the plants. Do they have any transport system in their bodies? So, if we see certain plants, they are of huge size. Certain plants, they grow hundreds of feet height. So, they get the water and other minerals in the soil. The leaf that is at the tip of the tree at 100 feet should get the minerals and water from the ground. So, the water is to be transported to these 100 feet height. So, definitely plants also need a transport system, a circulatory system. So, they have the transport mechanisms. So, as like animals, even, also, even plants also have some well developed transport systems and mechanisms by which they get the supply of water, minerals and other materials. So, I told you that plants, they need water and minerals from the ground to different parts and they need to transport the food that is manufactured in the leaves. Leaves are the site of food manufacture, photosynthesis, where food is prepared. So, this prepared food is to be transported to different parts for storage and for other activities. So, the transportation is required in such cases. And even in plants, certain kind of uh, toxins or certain excretory materials are produced. So, they are excreted or sent out, sometimes they are deposited in the body of the plant itself. So, there also the transport of materials required. So, this is all the requirement of material transport of materials in plants. Now, let us see what mechanisms are involved in transport in plants. So, in your previous classes, you studied that Van Helmont's experiments on plants. So, by his experiments, he proved that plants absorb water from the soil through roots water through roots. Plants basically they have two different kind of tissues for the transport of materials. One is xylem, the other one is phloem. What is xylem? What is phloem? Xylem is a kind of tissue which participates in the transportation or conduction of water to different parts supply of water. Whereas, if you see the phloem, it takes part in the conduction of food material that is prepared in the leaves to different parts of the body. So, phloem is to conduct the food materials and xylem is to conduct the water in plants. These are the two major conductive tissues which conduct water, minerals and the other food that is prepared. Okay, now, See, for example, if we look at the internal structure of a stem of a plant or a tree, here there are some vessels, xylem and phloem vessels. Where are they? They are in the trunk stem. But how the water that is present in the soil is transported, is passed to the xylem and what makes the water to flow in the xylem? Upward direction against the gravity. In our body, the blood flows against the gravity. How? Because the blood is pumped by the heart. Heart is exerting pressure. So, because of the pressure, the blood is flowing against gravity in the opposite direction to the ground. But here, plants and trees, they do not possess any pumping organ like animals, like humans. They do not have any pumping organ like heart. Then how the water is transported against the gravity, hundreds of feet? That is by some natural phenomena. Now, let us see what are those phenomena which make the water to flow or transport against the gravity in plants. So, to understand the mechanisms which helps in the transport or absorption of water by the roots, we must understand the structure of fruit. So, if you see the roots of a plant, roots 
I told you there are two different tissues that conduct food and water. In that, xylem is the tissue which conduct water. If you observe the stem, the xylem is at the center of the stem. But whereas if you observe the xylem in the roots, the xylem is to the exterior, exterior, outer side. Whereas in case of stem that is in the middle, if you come to the root, it is to the outer side, exterior side xylem is present. We need to observe the close structure of the root to understand the mechanisms. So here if we observe the cells of the root, some of these epidermal cells, they have the protrusions called as root hairs. So into which the cell sap it flows. So now outside the root hair there is soil which contains water. The water that is in the soil is very dilute compared to the concentration of the cell sap. So the cell sap in the root hair and outside soil it contains some water. That is the solution, mineral solution, the soil solution. It is very dilute compared to the cell sap. The concentration in the cell sap is more compared to the concentration of the solutes in the water outside that, that is in the soil. So what happens? The concentration difference. Inside the cell sap more concentration, outside this root hair less concentration. So that is by the process of osmosis, the water it enters into the cell sap of the root hair. So the water it enters. So now into this cell the water enters. Now if you compare the concentration of this cell sap and this cell sap here water is entered so it is this is diluted this is concentrated so the difference of concentrated and diluted makes the water to flow from here to here because the cells they have a semi permeable membranes which will allow the water so the water from this cell it enters into this cell in this way from one cell to another cell one cell to another cell the passes of water molecules takes place because of the osmotic pressure here the osmosis plays a very important role and finally it reaches the xylem. Here is the xylem. So in this way it build up some pressure called as root pressure, root pressure. So because, so here the absorption of water takes place by root pressure but you cannot say that the transport of water in plants takes place only by root pressure. You cannot say only root pressure. It is not only root pressure, but root pressure is one of the factor which contribute for the transport of water.